Welcome back people. In today's video tutorial, I will be looking at 2.4 inverse functions. 2.4 represents chapter 2, section 4 of the Pearson A-Level Maths Pure Maths Year 2 textbook. Let's first focus on the notation of the inverse function. So, if I have a function f of x, the inverse function has the notation f to the power minus 1 in bracket x. In the same way, if I have the function g of x, the inverse function has the notation g to the power minus 1 in bracket x. Key facts about the inverse function. First of all, the graph of the inverse function of f of x is just the graph of f of x reflected in the line y equal x. So have a look at this diagram over here. I've got the graph y equal f of x. The inverse function of f of x is just f of x reflected in the line y equal x. So here is the graph of the inverse function of f of x. Another key fact is that the domain of the inverse function of f of x is just the range of the function f of x. The range of the inverse function of f of x is just the domain of the function f of x. Now, the inverse function of f of x exists if and only if, I repeat, if and only if, f of x is a one-to-one -one function. Now let's have a look at the common misconception. The common misconception is that the inverse function of f of x is equal to 1 over f of x. This here is not true. That there is everything that you need to know about the inverse function. Okay, ladies and gents, here are some examples. Example number 1, 2 and 3. Before we look at these examples, let's quickly recap inverse functions. The first point, the domain of the inverse function is just the range of the original function. The range of the inverse function is just the domain of the original function. And the graph of the inverse function is just the graph of the original function reflected in the line y equal x. Now, we've got all the tools in the toolbox. Let's get started with example 1, 2 and 3. Example number 1. We have the function f of x equal 3 over x minus 1 for this given domain. I want to find the inverse function of f of x. Now, the very first step is to let y equal 3 over x minus 1. Now, what we need to do next is make x the subject, so I'm going to quickly do this. To get the final mark is to write down the inverse function of f of x is equal to, you replace everything here that is a y with x. So I have 3 plus x all over x. And that there completes question number 1. Let's move on to question number 2. I've got g of x equals square root of x minus 2 for this given domain. The very first step to find the inverse function of g of x is to let y equal square root of x minus 2. Now all I need to do next is make x the subject which I'm going to do very quickly. So now I've made x the subject, to get the final mark I need to write down the inverse function of g of x is equal to, I replace the y that I see over here with x, so x squared plus 2, and that there completes the question. Let's move on to question number 3. I've got h of x equal 2x squared minus 3 for this given domain, part a, I want to find the inverse function of h of x stating its domain part b solve h of a equal inverse h of a 
This looks like a juicy question. Okay, so I'm getting excited now for this particular question. I can't wait to tackle it. But before I actually go through the solutions, let me quickly rub out question one and question two. Okay, people, right. Now, this particular question is a juicy question. You have to be very specific with your answers, which you will see in due course. Let's have a look at part A. Okay, we want to find the inverse function of h of x. Like you all already know by now, we need to let y equal to the function that we're trying to work out the inverse for, so 2x squared minus 3. Okay, okay, we're nearly there, people, we're nearly there. What I need to do next is make x the subject, so I'm going to quickly do that. Okay, so I have that x is equal to the positive square root of y plus 3 oh, all over 2, or x is equal to the negative square root of y plus 3 all over 2. Therefore, I can conclude that the inverse function of h of x can be positive square root of x plus 3 all over 2, or negative square root of x plus 3 all over 2. Now this is where the juicy part comes. We need to determine whether it's the positive square root or the negative square root. In other words, we need to determine whether the inverse function of h of x is greater than 0 or is it less than 0. To work out which one it is, what we need to do is go back to our knowledge of domain and range of the inverse function. Well, the range of the inverse function is just the domain of the original function. So, to find the range of the inverse function of h of x, I need to go back to the domain of the function h of x. Well, if we look at the domain, we have that x is less than 0. So, what that means is that the range of the inverse function of h of x is going to be this one over here. Hence, we conclude that the inverse function of h of x is going to equal to the negative square root of x plus 3 all over 2. Now, the next part of the question says stating its domain stating its domain. So the domain of the inverse function of h of x is just the range of h of x. Now to find the range of h of x, it is very useful to sketch the graph of h of x, which is what I'm going to do now. h of x is a positive quadratic with y-intercept minus 3. It looks something like this. There you go. Okay, right, so that is the graph of y equal h of x. Now, I'm feeling excited, so I want to draw the graph of um, the inverse function of h of x. Now, going back to our knowledge of the inverse function, I know that the graph of the inverse function of h of x is just h of x reflected in the line y equal x. So here is the line y equal x. If I reflect h of x in the line y equal x, I obtain the following graph. Something like that. Okay, so this part over here is going to be minus 3. And this is the graph of y equal to the inverse function of h of x. Now, if I look at the graph of y equal h of x, I can see that the range will be h of x is greater than minus 3. The reason why h of x is not greater than or equal to minus 3 is because over here we have that x is less than 0. x equals 0 is not included. Okay, so range of h of x will just be h of x is greater than minus 3, and we have that h of x is a real number. 
that there is the range. So the domain of the inverse function of h of x we know by definition is just the range of h of x. Well the range of h of x is just h of x is greater than minus 3. Now for the domain of the inverse function of h of x instead of writing h of x we have to write x because the x is your input that is your domain. So we write x is greater than minus 3. Okay such that x is a real number. So the domain of the inverse function of h of x is x is greater than minus 3 where x is a real number. The next part of the question is part b. Before I do part b I'm going to quickly rub out what I have over here. Okay let's have a look at part b. I want to solve this equation. Right, first of all, what I want to look at is h of x equal h inverse of x. Now that there represents the intersection between h of x and h inverse of x. So it represents this particular point over here. Now, the solution to this equation well, it's just a solution to the equation h of x equal x because we have that y equal x also intersects h of x and h inverse of x at this particular point. So, if this is true, it is also true that h of a is equal inverse h of a. And because these two are true, it is also true that this particular equation is equivalent to writing the equation h of a equal a. So solving this equation is just solving this equation over here. So now let's form the equation from this particular step here. The equation that we can actually form is h of a which is 2a squared minus 3 is equal to a. So we formed a quadratic equation. Now I rearranged this to obtain 2a squared minus a minus 3 equal to 0. Now you can solve this quadratic equation either using the formula, completing the square, etc. or even easy you can just use your calculator directly the equation button. After solving this equation I have obtained the solution a equal 3 over 2 or a is equal minus 1. Now we need to determine which one is correct. Go back to your graph. We can see that over here a is negative. Hence the solution is a equal to minus 1 and that there completes the question. Part B of question number three. If you found this video tutorial useful, please make sure you subscribe and make sure you like the video.